Absolutely. I, I, I was thinking that when you were speaking that they, I suppose there is, there's always going to be that gap, isn't there, that between those two in terms of there's the balance you can do, but there's always got that, there's going to be that gap where they can't go fully one way, fully the other way. But I, then, and then what I was thinking in terms of like, I suppose you really answered it, but I was, like, my idea was like, is it, is there a case now for companies to actually take a backward step, say, leave all personal devices at home and we'll, and just, like give out like um, work and business use, like computers, phones, and so on, and then sort of just cut them off. But then I suppose that then limits limits human beings interacting with each other. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't know the answer well, really. It seems to be. Well, Karen, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, corporations, like I said, they're really struggling with this, and mm. their default is, well, let me take the easy way out, right? and what they believe to be the only solution. Um, so a lot of this is yeah. an awareness challenge. Like they think the only solution is, well, mandate the company or the, the employee use a company issued device and we'll just monitor that device. But like yeah. I said, we kind of, we tried that before. I mean, I remember back in the early 2000s when people were carrying around their personal device and their, and their, and their work device. And, um, you know, that fell apart, right? And yeah. the whole BYOD uh, trend is 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 really the only prag like is is the only realistic end state. You know, like we're going to get to a place where people are going to have one device. But what we need to do, and look, this is you know one of the things that we work on every day at Safeguard Cyber, is try and increase awareness around the fact that you don't have to uh, issue uh, a company owned device, and that's really not the way to do it. You want to offer the employee choice. You want to say, hey, look, we can issue you a device, but then you've got to carry two two phones around, or um, you can allow us to monitor your personal device when you're using it for work purposes. Um, but we also promise you that we'll maintain your privacy when we're doing that. Yeah. And you know, it's really an awareness thing uh, that we deal with. I can't tell you how many times, Karen, um, when. When we sit down and talk to a bank or a, a life sciences company and they say, wait a second, you can do what? And they're just not even really aware of the fact that this is a, a, pro a solvable problem. Um, and, uh, you know, when, when we have an opportunity to show them how it works, you know, they get very excited. And, you know, that's why we have some of the biggest, uh, you know, life sciences and, and bank uh, uh, companies in the world that are customers of ours. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and I suppose that, like leading on from that, in terms of what and the new, obviously, this, I mean, that's all over the news at the moment is the of the the, ch the chat GP like GTP and stuff like that. Do you see that as becoming like actually increasing the issue and the problem, or do you find do you think that actually will reduce the problem because they'll be able to set things in place that can like monitor, look without the privacy being um, like damaged. Well, look, I mean, I think chat GPT and uh, it is just the latest example of um, the public seeing artificial intelligence and machine learning in use, right? That's something in the technology world that we've been aware of for, you know, a long time. Yeah. Um, but chat GPT has come up with a novel way for the regular person to, you know, to use that technology. Um, at Safeguard Cyber, we believe that uh, that type of capability is something that we can absolutely use in cybersecurity um, to help, you know, uh, uh, frontline analysts uh, on security teams respond to threats faster, right? Um, one of the things that we're working on at Safeguard Cyber is building chat GPT-like capability into our user interface so that when an analyst uh, uh, receives notice of a threat, we can in kind of plain English in terms uh, provide guidance to them about the type of threat, where it may be coming from and what mitigation efforts they should be taking uh, in terms of how to respond to it. And I think we're gonna see more and more of that because you, know, you think about one of the biggest problems in cybersecurity today is the talent shortage. You know, there's just not enough people out there um, in the industry. And um, as a result of that, security operation centers and teams are, are really overworked, right? And they don't have enough time to respond to all the threats 
that they that they discover, right? And I think Chat GPT like capability um, will enable will enable um, will enable security teams to use people who don't have deep you know technical expertise or knowledge to become effective responders. Uh, and investigators of cyber threats. So I think it's a very exciting space. And like I said, we're, we're actively working to build that type of capability into um, our user interface. And I think you're gonna see a wave of uh, cyber companies doing the same thing uh, because of the efficiencies um, that it can help provide to, to, uh, to cyber, uh, to, to security teams. <laughs>